the art of learning to live with somebody. One, it begins with being ready to make an, have an unconditional friendship. Those of you who want to learn this, you must learn to build an unconditional friendship. Your spouse, because they are first, find a way for them to be your best friend. Find a way for them to be your best friend. Oh, if you say I'm going to get married, or you're married right now, some of you, you're very good lovers, but you're the worst friends. You find yourselves confiding in other people than anyone else. That's a problem. You hear a man and all his plans are outside his house. He just informs his wife later, oh, by the way, I did this. Are you friends? Do you even discuss about these things? You don't know how to live together. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't know how to share space. You, you, you sit there. I, mean, I don't want to sit with you. You understand? Married people, they love each other. But they can't even sit together. They can't. They can't even laugh together. It's not there. And then some say, oh, you know, you're just saying that because you're married on one year. But when you grow, it grows still. You get to use no. And I tell people, nothing you continuously invest in can grow stale. It does not work that way. Why? Because the principle is seed and harvest. Whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. If you continue sowing the right seeds in your marriage, it will never grow stale. It will never grow stale. I've never been there with my wife and we have nothing to say. We always have, there's always something. There's always something for us to talk about. There's always something. We, we can't even be quiet because there's always something to talk about and laugh about. There's always something because you invest, you learn to sow the right seed. You see, and sometimes it begins in those little small things when you're communicating with each other. You see what I'm saying? If you show them that they can talk to you, they will talk. If you show them that they cannot talk to you, they will sulk, they will not talk. If you think that their opinions are important, they will give them. If you don't think that their opinions are not important, they will not give them. It's what you what? You sow. Somebody shout hallelujah. If somebody feels that they are hard, they will speak again. If somebody feels that they are not hard, they will not speak again. It's what we invest. You see, and that companionship then becomes a lifetime of learning to invest in each other. Learn to be together and it's okay to be two. That space should be okay. Some of you, you're, you're only connected because of the children. Some of you are connected because of you. Uh, because of, you understand, there are many other things connecting you to this. Because of the church. Because, but are you really connected? If, if all this was not there, would you still be two? You see what I'm saying? That is why for me, when couples get married, I prefer those first, that first year, you live together. That first one or two years. I would recommend, if even possible, don't have a house boy, a house girl. Mm -mm. Don't put them in your space. Unless it's unavoidable. Some of you uh, have responsibilities. You are living with your brothers and sisters, which is also a virtue. It's a gift. It's good by God. But if you can, learn at least to spend that first year or two to, to figure things out and understand each other. Such that you're not strange to each other. 